Algae. Introduction and History. Algae is an important group of organisms which are found in a wide range of habitats be it oceans, rivers, freshwater lakes, ponds, or brackish water bodies, snow, barks of the trees, etc. Ranging from a small tiny cell to the giant kelp measuring up to several meters, these group of plants have some unique features which are not found in any other group of organisms. Algae have both prokaryotic and eukaryotic groups, large varieties of pigment systems, triphasic life cycle, a long evolutionary history, etc. Algae changed the planet's atmosphere by producing oxygen thus paving the way for evolution of life on Earth. These tiny organisms not only give us oxygen to breathe, food to eat, medicines to heal, cosmetics to use but also provide a lot of information about origin of life. It has been predicted that not only in future vehicles will run on algal biofuels but also power plants will use algae for carbon dioxide sequestration. Algae are group of plants which are known since ancient civilizations. The term algae was first introduced by Linnaeus in 1753 and it was A. L. de Gesserou, 1789, who classified the plants and delimited the algae from rest of the plant world to its present status. The algae as such have a history that is as old as that of other plants. The first references to algae are to be found in early Chinese literature but there are also references in Roman and Greek literature. The Greek word for alga was phycos whilst in Roman times they were called fucus and were used by matrons for cosmetic purposes. The Roman writer Virgil apparently did not have much use for them as he writes of nihil velier alga. The Chinese regarded them aesthetically and this is signified in their name of Xeo. Algae have been known for a long time in Hawaii where they are used as a food and are called limu. In the early centuries writings about algae were restricted either to their use or else to their taxonomy. As with other plants no real progress was made in our scientific knowledge of the algae until the invention of the microscope. As early as the 12th century, however, algae were being used for monoreal purposes on the north coast of France. From here it seems that the practice spread to Great Britain, because in the 16th century there is reference to their use for the same purpose. This use of the algae for manure may have had something to do with the idea that they were bred of putrefaction as described in 1583 by C. Zalpino. Up to about 1,800 all algae were usually placed in one of four great genera. Fucus. Ulva. C.O.N.F. Erva. Corolina. Charo was known but commonly grouped with the horsetails, Equisetum. In the same century, 17th, the use of brown seaweeds for fertilizer in France had reached such a pitch that special decrees were passed in connection with their collection. At the other end of the world the art of making agar permeated from China to Japan, and thus the foundation was laid for what was later to become a great industry. During the 18th century the more observant workers began to query the unwidely assemblages into which algae were then grouped. Towards the end of the 18th century, the burning of seaweed for the extraction of soda was reaching considerable proportions in France and was extending to Scotland, though here it did not reach its heyday until some way into the 19th century. The early years of the 19th century were distinguished by many great algologists. There were Dilwyn Vacher and Roth, who named and described the genera Hydrodictian and Batricospermum. Between 1805 and 1816 Lamuru described many new genera, including Laminaria and many of the tropical Chlorophyceae. In Great Britain and on the continent marine algae were studied and described by Lingby, Bori, and Greville, the last named first describing the well-known genera Polysiphonia and Rhodimenia. In Sweden, C. Agard established the importance of the cystocarp in Rhodophycine taxonomy and erected the divisions Diatomaceae, Nostokiniae, Confervoidae, Ulvaceae, Floridae, and Fucoidae. 
The Nostokinii included many Mixificii and the conferved Wadii comprised the filamentous green algae. He was followed by J. Agard, his son, who described new species and also studied reproduction in Conferva, Bryopsis, Fucus, and Griffithshire. In 1854-1855 the great French algologist Thuret produced his wonderful monograph on fertilization in fucus. He also puzzled over the problem of cutlaria, a plant in which apparently there were only sexual organs of reproduction. About the middle of the 19th century W. H. Harvey in England produced a series of great marine algal floras, Phycologia Britannica, Phycologia Australica, and the Nereus Boreali Americana. He also described algae from many other parts of the world, including New Zealand and Antarctica. In these classical works on marine algae, the plants were divided into Chlorospermi, Rhodospermi, and Melanospermi. During the same period, Kietzing, Ketzing, in Germany was describing more new genera than anyone either before or after. These were published in a number of works, Systema Algorum, Phycologia Generalis, and the Tabulae Phycologici. At the same time Braun was studying reproduction in algae and he has since been remembered for his contributions to the sexual reproduction of the charales. However, work on the algae was still largely restricted to taxonomy, very little having been done on life cycles and nothing on their ecology or physiology. Towards the end of the 19th century a new group of workers came to the fore, Ariskauk, 1866-1884, described new genera and species, but he also investigated zoospore and gamete formation in Eurospora and Cladophora and carried out morphological studies in Laminaria and Macrocystis. This period can best be regarded as one devoted to rearrangement of the existing algal classifications. The information that was accumulating, both about morphology and reproduction, forced workers to realize that the old classifications were thoroughly unsatisfactory. Between 1875 and 1900 Ceridot reorganized the Batricospermacea, Gomont the Mixificii, Philps, 1895-1898, the Rhodimenials and Schmitz laid the foundations for the modern arrangement of the Rhodificii. Kjellman added materially to our knowledge of the algae of cold waters in his studies of Arctic algae and algae of the Merman Sea. During these years too, de Tony started publishing his monumental Siloge Algorum which was a conspectus of all known and described algal species. Important life histories were worked out at the end of the 19th century. In 1897 to 1898 and in 1899 Sauvageau established the nature of the life cycle in Cutlaria and Alozonia. Taxonomic rearrangement was, however, still the order of the day. Willa in 1897 established the Protococoidae, Confervwadii, and Siphonii, whilst a few years earlier Bortzi had segregated off from the Chlorophyceae the yellow-green algae. In 1899 Luther established the heteroconti and the nature of the cilia was then used by Blackman and Tansley in their classification of 1902. In 1900 Blackman postulated a flagellate ancestry for the algae and suggested that in the green algae three distinct tendencies, the volvocina, tetrasporin, and chlorococcin, could be recognized. Williams described the complete life history of Dictyota. In 1905 Oldman's work on morphology, together with his contributions to life form, appeared. In 1910 Pia commenced publishing his studies of fossil algae in Europe and he was followed by Walcott in the United States in 1914. It was in these years too that Pascher commenced his classical studies on the protista and flagellata, and from this work emerged our present modern concepts of the algae. Marine algal ecology received a tremendous stimulus by the work of Cotton in 1912 on the marine algae of Clare Island and the works of Sechel on geographical distribution in relation to temperature. The study and appreciation of the importance of soil algae came to the fore with the works of Fritsch and Salisbury and Branchley. Freshwater algal ecology also received a great impetus from the work of Transio in the USA and First West and then Fritsch in England. 
In 1910 Pia commenced publishing his studies of fossil algae in Europe and he was followed by Walcott in the United States in 1914. Algal plant physiology and biochemistry made considerable advances with the work of Kylan, Neep, Pantanelli and Harder, whilst important algal floras were being published by Johnson, Borgeson, Collins, and Scottsburg. The year 1915 also saw the establishment of the Lominarian life cycle. The advent of the First World War naturally stopped further advances and subsequent major progress mainly dates from about 1930. Since then our knowledge of the algal cell, the cell wall and cell sap, nuclear division and the structure of flagella has greatly increased, especially with the introduction of new techniques from other disciplines, such as X-ray photography, the electron microscope and improved optical microscopes. Modern ideas on the classification of the Pheophyceae and Rhodophyceae are based on the works of Kylan, Papenfuss, Feldman, and Svidelius and our modern knowledge of algal plastids and sexuality dates from around 1930. Since then, too, Pringsheim has demonstrated the importance of pure algal cultures as a means of establishing the taxonomic status of the smaller organisms.